Joseph for that ministry and music, are we not? Amen. Not bad. Not bad. Yeah. Came on out in this cold weather, didn't you? Not bad. Good to see you. I serve. That's the theme for the year. Shaped to serve. That's the theme for the first quarter. The seeking church. That's the subject for today. What is the most important moment? in the church every Sabbath. Somebody said, get in here. I want you to think a little bit deeper. What's the most important moment in church every Sabbath? Prayer. Let's pray. Father, guide us as we look at your word today. In Jesus' name, amen. Who are the most important persons in church every Sabbath? Very serious sermon I'm going to preach today because we cannot accomplish what God has sent me to Tacoma Park to accomplish until you get this day. Matthew 18 and verse 11. Maybe Jesus can help us. It's not that the answers you gave are not good answers. They are not the answer, but they're good answers. Matthew 18, verse 11. For the Son of Man is come to seek and to save. Come on, somebody. What? See, church service is not for saints. Church service is not for saints. Church service is for sinners. Why do you think that God made this statement to Isaiah? My house shall be a house of prayer for all people. Are all people saints? See, God is suggesting something in the story we're going to look at today. And the story we look at today is told by Jesus in response to church members who have no idea what the church is for. Jesus is all about one thing, lost people. And you will discover in my sermon last, my sermon next week, that there are lost people in the church. The lost coin is about people lost in the house. The reason why a lot of us grumble and complain about what happens in church is because we think church is for us. We want the music to be for us. We want the order of service to be for us. We want the sermon to be for us. Jesus said, I didn't, he said, I, he said, 
I didn't come here for the righteous. I came here for the sinner. I did not come here for those who are well. I came for those who are sick. The most important moment in church, ladies and gentlemen, is when the pastor opens the doors of the church for somebody to come to Jesus. All due respect to you, it's not the time of prayer, it's not the sermon, it's not the music. All those are props for the Holy Ghost who is aiming at one thing every time God's people meet. He's aiming at one thing, that somebody say yes to Jesus Christ. No apology for what I'm saying right now. Because I base it on the word of God. You see, Luke, the 15th chapter, begins with a very, very interesting, interesting, interesting statement. Luke 15 and, 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 and verse 1 this is this is this is this is troubling stuff. This is this this is then drew near unto him all the publicans and sinners for to do what? Yeah, yeah. They came, the people who had a need. See, if you don't come to church with a need and only come because you think you are saved and righteous, if you don't come with a sense of need, what are you doing here? I'm going to attack your concept of church today. See, the reason why we get into debates in the church about the kind of music and, 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 and this, that, and the other is because we, 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 we have a picture of church that's totally non-biblical. Church services should be designed in a way that anybody walking off the street feels comfortable. I know why you don't want to say amen, because you're afraid of where I'm going. Because we have this boxed idea of church. We want a certain pattern, a certain liturgy, a certain kind of way, a certain kind of this. We, 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 see, folk, we talk out of both sides of our mouth. Fact is, if a bunch of folk off the street came in here today and possessed this building and took it over, we'd be upset. Because then we maybe couldn't do things the way we're used to doing them. Because we think church service is for us. Look at verse 2. When the sinners and publicans came, look who complains. Then the Pharisees and scribes. Now, last time I read my Bible, they are members of the church. I know you don't want to be a Pharisee and scribe, but just stay with the sermon. Saying this... This, what they say is abominable. The church members attack Jesus and say, this man, look at your Bible. What do they accuse him of? What do they accuse him of? The Savior dares to receive sinners. Come on, somebody. How come you're not upset with me? A Savior dares to receive sin. What in the world do you think a Savior's for? This is abominable. He dares to let folk in the church who sit on the front row full of jewelry. He dares to let folk come in the church and sit who've got spits halfway up their thigh and plunge down dresses. He dares to do that. He did not come here for the chocolate-eating, carrot-drinking person. He came here for folk who eat pork and drink. Come on, somebody. That's why he came. And until you're comfortable sitting in church with somebody sitting next to you with smoke on their breath, you're here for the wrong reason. Now, we're not just talking this year. 
We get ready to move out into this community. And brothers and sisters, I'm praying that the Lord will bombard this church with all kind of strange looking, strange smelling, strange talking people. And I want to see how you go handle it. How dare they? This man receiveth sinners and eat. What in the world is a savior supposed to do, y'all? What in the world are we supposed to do? You know, I preached this sermon to you a couple of weeks ago talking about practice. Remember that sermon? Yeah. You don't like that sermon. I got a lot of emails about that sermon. Practice. Ooh, pastor, practice. You know, some of the first folk we got to practice on is the young folk of the church. See, they don't think like we think. They don't act like we act. Then I mention the same things we're interested in. They, they think we're boring and dull. And in some cases, they are correct. We want everything the same. Everything's safe. Everything's safe. You know, I watch it sometime when the, when the music kind of picks up, Anwar kind of picks up. Everybody comes out and look around. Who's, who's going to clap? Who's going who's, who's to who, Who's going to move? See, the minute, the, minute, the, minute, the minute anything is introduced that disturbs our little world, because we think this church is ours. So anything that happens that kind of disturbs our little comfort zone. And the thing about it is, some of this stuff that you're resisting, it's in your bones. If you would just cut loose one thing. And really, I mean, if you just let yourself, you look up, you'd be, yeah, you would be. But you're sitting there. <clears throat> it's in you. I'm having a little fun with you, but I'm trying to make my point. We, we, we're boxed. Everything is boxed. And here comes Jesus. Having dinner with sinners and, and prostitutes. He receives them. He doesn't just eat with them. He embraces the word, the Greek word there means he embraced, he hugged them. He, they saw him hugging people with liquor on their breath. They saw him, he was hugging them. And he was hugging ladies and had jewelry on, he was hugging them. He was hugging them. So what? And, 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 and Desire Bay just paints the story. says that the, the party was at Matthew's house, a publican. And so the church members were not invited to the party because, you know, they don't know how to do nothing. The church members don't have, not have, they don't have any fun, so they didn't invite them. No, no, no. So when the party was over, Jesus is leaving. And the publicans and fair, I mean, the publicans, they're standing outside the party, outside Matthew's house. You hear that music? Yeah. Bet they're serving meat in there. And so when Jesus comes out, they say, mm, mm, mm. Jesus said, look, fellas, what man of you, having a hundred sheep, if you lose one of them, does not leave the ninety and nine in the wilderness and go after that sheep which is lost. And when he had found it, he led it on his shoulders rejoicing. Now let's, let's look at this. Because we're talking about the attitude of Jesus about people. See, I don't believe, you, you, you see, I have a theory. We keep talking about when the um, Spirit's going to be outpoured and going to be the, uh, the final revival in the church and Revival of, 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 of godliness. We love to talk about that. Why has that not happened? We're not ready to receive the people he's going to bring. They're not going to be like us. 
not going to be like us. And, 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 so, and so Jesus, he, he says to them, he says, he says, look, he said, your problem is you don't see me, the Savior, as a Savior. You don't understand the work of a Savior. Now, the, the next sentence is going to bother you. See, Jesus is not nearly as particular as some of us are. Look at who he spent time with. Now, don't get confused. I'm not saying, I'm not saying that he's not particular about obedience. I understand all that, the commandments, I got all that. I got all that. Ellen White in the books, I got all that. All that, I got it. I'm not saying that's not important. I'm saying that in relating to people, Jesus hobnob... See, if Jesus, if Jesus lived in Tacoma Park today, folk, he would not be in places that... That, that he'd shock you. Now let me really get you something to text people about. The pastor said that Jesus would go to bars. Yes, I just said that. Yes, he would. He would go down there on, what is it, K Street, where the prostitutes hang out, he'd be there. I didn't say he'd be with them. I said he'd be there. He would be where dope peddlers are. Why would he be there? Because, major announcement, he would be there because he's a savior. We got to get that, folk. Christ is a savior. Now, here's the sad part. Here's the sad part. The Pharisees and scribes, see, get the story. Christ is subtle. Good man, if you, having 100 sheep, leave the 99, and notice, notice, where does he leave the 99? In the wilderness. See, he's making, he's making, he's making, he's punching at them. I'm going to leave y'all in the wilderness. The wilderness, Ellen White says, represents their attitude. I'm going to leave you with your attitude. In the meantime, I'm going to get this sheep. Now, remember, the sheep was a part of the fold. So the story really is about the work of the church to save those that leave. Why do they leave? I know they leave because they still want to do wrong. I know they leave because they still want to do dope. I know they leave because they still want to drink. I know they leave because they still want to go to football games on Friday night. I know why they leave. But the reason why they leave is they can't stand the fold. That's the part you don't want to talk about. He's out of there. Gone. Go someplace else and find some new grass. Get high on grass. Well, that's not in the text, but it just kind of came to my <laughs> kind of came to my mind. Whatever he is doing, and 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 remember, these stories are very power packed. See, whatever, and 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 in case you kind of sitting there feeling good, oh, but pastors really. He's really punching the church right now, y'all. That's me. I'm the sheep. Well, the dumb sheep gets out there and doesn't know how to get back. He may find himself some grass. He's got his hooves up in the air. Hey, some grass, man, some grass. He looks up. He falls over the cliff. See, the sheep represents people who get lost, know they lost, don't know how to find their way back. Are you with me so far? But Jesus leaves the fold. That's the part, that's, that, that's the part you want to get. He, he's, saying, he's saying to the scribes and Pharisees, you there, I'm here. If the church is going to do the work of Christ, we have to be willing on a regular basis to leave the fold and find the lost. Hello. 
Now, let me read you some more text. Look at Luke 19.10. Stay, stay in Luke 15. Luke 19.10. It's the spirit of Jesus that we're after here. Luke 19 and verse 10. For the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which is lost. He is come. The Greek says he's always coming. It's in the present progressive tense. The Son of Man is always in the process of coming after the lost. See, every church service we have, we should be seeking the lost. Come on, somebody. See, when the pastor, see, the, see, see, see a, a lot of folk, a lot of folk, why, 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 why does the pastor make appeal? Well, why not? If the work of the church is to seek the lost, come on, somebody. If, 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 if that's the work of the church to receive, why, why would you not give opportunity for people to come? Well, they seem to be so long and nobody comes. Well, number one, that ain't none of your business. That's none of your business. If you had the spirit of the Lord Jesus Christ, when the pastor makes an appeal, the first thing you would do rather than looking around to see who's going to come. What should you do? What should you do? Bow your head, close your eyes, and pray. We need to become a joint community. It's not Pastor Wright and Pastor Warfield and Pastor Daniels and Pastor Taylor and Pastor Dunbar. It's not us. It, it's, not, it's not the pastors. It's all of us together working with God's spirit to draw the lost. First place, first place, if we were really involved in the mission of Christ, we would be uncomfortable coming to church every Sabbath, Sabbath after Sabbath. You don't bring nobody. You don't know nobody who needs to be saved. Nobody. Not narrowing a person. I'm talking about the purpose of church, folk. This is not some entertainment center. We arise in the morning. Who did they say was preaching for the for second service? The minute you ask that question, you lost. Lord can't do a thing for you because you're coming for who's preaching. Hey! You ought to be falling into these pews and flocking to this place. Why? Because you want to help Jesus in action on Sabbath. You come in with your prayer, come in with your spirit. You don't care who's preaching. What you know is at some point in the service, somebody is going to be given a chance to say yes to Jesus. You want to be right there in the pew praying, asking God. We want to become a mighty army, a church so powerful that when the doors of the church are open, we're not worried about who's preaching. We, we praying for those that are coming. We become an army that Satan cannot defeat. All these prayers rising up from these pews. When the pastor makes an appeal, God has to do something. No, we sitting there waiting. Well, oh boy. Oh boy. He done said that the lady sing another verse. <laughs> oh, Jesus, send somebody down. Let the deacon join the church. Anybody. Shut the man up. Am I talking real? Come on, y'all. Am I talking real? Look, I'm, I, I, I didn't come to come apart to play no games. There's a work to be done. There's souls to be won. And we're not yet ready, folk. We're not yet. We're getting there. I'm so proud of you. We're getting there, but we're not yet. we got to take our hands off this church and stop treating it like it's our backyard. Too many are self-centered about church. We see the church, and especially the church service, as our own little backyard where only the things we personally like should occur. We don't want the service to be too long. Oh, Jesus, he didn't get up to 1230. Now I'm going to get up. And the parking meter's running. They're going to give me a ticket. Lord, help me. You know, really, folk, really, really. See, God, God can't do anything with that. We don't want there to be, a, we don't know appeals. Don't make no appeals. Now, I'm going to tell you, any some, anytime somebody speaks against appeals, they tell them on themselves. You know why you don't want any appeal to be made? Because you know you ought to be coming. 
It's getting to you. I'm going to escape it. But I got news for you. As long as Henry Wright's your pastor, you can't escape. Because <laughs> Warfield, Taylor, whoever, we're going we gonna to see, we're going we gonna to open these doors. And you see, folk, see, I, I personally, if no one comes down, that don't bother me. I've done all a human can do, provide opportunity. If someone comes down, it's not because of the sermon I preach. It's because somebody responded to God's spirit. Pastors don't win souls. The Holy Ghost wins souls. So once I make the appeal, I'm free. I've done my work, but ah, I got a conviction. Wally, I got a conviction down in my soul that if we just lock our arms together and become a moving machine of the Holy Spirit seeking for the lost, God will find this church irresistible. He'll begin to trust us with the strange and the funny. He'll bring them on in here. We'll watch God's spirit change them around. Oh, yes, they may walk down the aisle, first of all, all be decked with jewelry. Let God's keep your mouth shut. Let God's spirit don't say nothing. Let God's spirit don't worry about what they're wearing. Let God's spirit dress yourself right. Let God's spirit fix them up when he's ready. They'll change in time, just like you have changed in time. But to be dressed right on the outside and full of the jewelry of self-sufficiency on the inside, who's closer to hell? The jewelry wearer or the jewelry wearer? Some people don't want things in church to be too formal. Others want everything to be structured. God forbid that there be anything that happens that is emotional. No emotion. Don't, don't get emotional in church. Now, this is the same person who sits in front of the TV when them sorry Redskins are playing football. <laughs> hey! Run that thing, man. Hey, stop it. What's wrong with you? In church... No, emo no emotion, no, no emotion in church. No, sorry. No, don't raise your voice in church. Don't make, no, no, no. Hey, come on, y'all. How can you be unemotional about the cross? How can you sit calmly about the cross? How can, how can, how can you hold back tears when the pastor's talking about the suffering of the Savior? Surely, surely ought to be some kind of emotion that's stirred in the soul. Just think about yourself. Just think about your own sorry carcass and how God brought you from a long way. Ought to make you pause and shout in church. The problem is we have a set view of the church and its mission. We think everything ought to go exactly the way we think everything ought to go. So Jesus tells these stories. He tells these stories. Yeah. If he lose one of them. Do all the same people that you were baptized with when you came in the church, do they still come to church? Do all the family members that were baptized or came in the church with you, are they still in the church? Do all the family members you were reared in the church with, are they still coming? There needs to be a burden. But folk, we, we, we need to hurt about this stuff. We, 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 we're, we're too complacent. Instead of, you know, always preaching to the young folk, they ought not be this, that, and the other. Listen to them. Just listen, listen to them. 
Now, young people will say things that don't make any sense. But they, they don't know that they don't make any sense. But remember, when you were young, didn't you say stuff that didn't make any sense? And you thought when you said it, you were being very intelligent? Remember that? You couldn't understand why the, your parents couldn't see the wisdom in what you said. Do you have compassion for souls? And go after that which is lost until they find it. Well, you know, we, 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 could, we, 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 we could paint that. We could paint that. The shepherd takes the same dangers as the sheep. We, we, could, we could paint that. He walks the same path as the sheep that's lost. We can, we can dress that up. Comes to the cliff where the sheep is and finds him, brings him back. We can talk about all that. See, the untold story in verses 1 through 7 is what is going on in the fold while the Savior is looking for the sheep. Have you ever thought about that? I don't see why he's out there. You know that sheep never did have no sense. It left us all here by ourselves. pastor never has no time to visit folk in the church. He's always out there in the street. I look for the day Warfield. Now, I like to visit people, as some of you know. But I look for the day Warfield when people stop judging pastors by how many church members they visit. It judges more by how many hours we spend in the street visiting people who know not Jesus Christ. Did you hear what I just said? Did you really listen to what I just said? See, too many Seventh-day Adventist Christians judge the church by what it does for Seventh-day Adventists. I was one of the first Seventh-day Adventist pastors to have a full 30-minute telecast. In like fact, I was the first local pastor to have one. Columbus, Ohio, back in the 70s, yours for the asking was the program, became the number one religious telecast in all of central Ohio. And I remember the church members fussing because um, I didn't dress up with a shirt and tie, wore a turtleneck. Remember that? Yeah, some of you saw the program. Turtleneck. Music was kind of wild. Introducing the show wasn't, wasn't, you know, wasn't, you know, wasn't, wasn't, wasn't what 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 if we have in Jesus? Didn't use that one, sir, no, sir. Gospel music, bring it on. I remember getting the call from a lady. She said, Pastor Wright, she said, she said, I I I can't watch your program. She said it's not it's not Adventist enough. This is what I said to her. I said, Thank God for your call. Now, folk, I'm a little crazy. I said, Thank God for your call. She said, oh, yes, oh, yes. I said, you have confirmed in my mind I'm doing exactly what God wants me to do. I said, because if I'm having a TV program to win Seventh-day Adventists, I need to get off the air. Because if you as a church member need a TV program that pleases you to keep you in the church, you are not saved at all. I said, I don't want the program to appeal to Adventists. I ain't trying to win you. I want the man out there. Word spread. I didn't get any more calls. (laughs) And the program flourished. Did anybody hear what I just said? Did you listen to the story I just said? When the programs of Tacoma Park Church, see, there should be no ministry. I don't care whether it's family ministry, men's ministry, women's ministry, young adult ministry, prayer ministry, until the ministries of this church appeal to the people outside the church, we are kidding ourselves. 
As long as we're just doing stuff to please one another and draw. We are kidding. That's not why God brought us in here. We are to bust these walls open and go after those who would not feel. Every program must be measured by how many non-Adventists does it draw. And if we're enjoying ourselves, spending money together, always eating together, always eating. <laughs> Didn't we have a fine time? Yes, honey. And the food, wasn't it good? There are people out there starving, and we're feeding one another. This man receiveth sinners and eateth with them. Well, Jesus knew, I'm almost done. I'm almost done for the clock watchers. I'm almost done. Jesus knew, Jesus knew what was going on in the fold. So did too. I like the way the story is. Jesus is a master. The man is a master psychologist. And when he findeth it, that's the way the Bible talks, findeth it, he layeth it on his shoulder. Man, that thing busts me wide open. And you figure he'd been hunting for this sheep. He done got all scratched up, knees is bruised, sandals half worn out, going after this dumb sheep. Finally gets it. Now, shepherds have a rod. They have a rod and a staff. Now, the sheep better be glad it wasn't me. Because I'm a melancholic. And patience ain't one of my virtues. And then found this sheep. I'm all bruised up, hungry. I'm going to take that rod. Get on back to that fold. He layeth it on his shoulder. Why don't you pause and give God a hand? Come on now. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He lays it on his shoulder. Now, I'm figuring he's doing that for the sheep. He's doing it for the fold. See, they're waiting for him to show up, O'Neal, with the sheep. And they want to see that sheep being brought back. Bippity, bap, bap, bap. Dragging him. He comes over the hill. And the word goes, here he come. Here he come. Now, he going to get his. He's carrying, praise God. He's carrying the sheep on his shoulder. The fold can't say nothing. The spirit, hey, the spirit of Christ for the lost ought to close the mouth of the church. There's nothing to be said about the sinner that comes in because he's got it on his shoulder. Are you listening to me, saints? When that young person comes back, when that wayward soul returns, when that person who's never been in the church before comes in, I don't care how they look, he carries the sheep on his shoulder. Shut your mouth and receive the sheep. Even if the sheep scratch, even if the fold had planned to call a board meeting, can't call it now because the sheep is on the shoulder of the shepherd. Are you listening to me? We must learn to receive the broken folk. We always want to tell folk what they did. Well, child, we're glad you're back. We heard, though. Well, that's us. Oh, we got records. We heard. Uh, when are you going to bring the little baby? Is, is the daddy going to come? God forgive us, folk. 
He's finally back in the pew. We, we heard, you, you, when did you get out? Were you really in jail all day? God, forgive us! Oh, I saw you and your husband sitting in church together. Well, I guess everything's all right now, huh? It's none of your business. Get your own raggedy life together. No, folks, I'm serious. We got to punch and dig and sniff. And then we, then we, know, and we holy fight. We make it holy. Child, I, I, I prayed. For, I, knew, I knew he was beating you. I prayed for you, honey. I prayed for you. So glad to see you back in church. The sheep. Where is the sheep? Somebody tell me. Where's the sheep? Where's the sheep? Tell somebody right now where the sheep is. It's on the shoulder of the... That shuts your mouth. Nothing to say. He's carrying the sheep on his bosom. Shut your mouth. Thank God and keep on going. Let people alone who have made mistakes. Leave it. Just leave it alone. And God will start trusting this church with miracles. Word will get out. You go to Tacoma Park, they just receive you. They don't ask no questions. They don't look for no history. You go there, they just receive. Word will go out. There's a place where the lost sheep is welcome. That's enough. So when you're old, you don't have to do all that formal stuff, you know. Conclusion, the conclusion. I'm done. <laughs> now I need this church to join their pastor. Folk, I'm praying for great things. I have come to love this church. I see the potential here. But some of us are still hanging on the stuff that ain't got nothing to do with nothing. This church is God's house for the lost. And we are stewards of this church. What do you say? This church was left on this triangle long after the GC left because God was not through with this community. This church must now recast its vision and purpose with an understanding that God does not do anything in vain. First, we must accept our own lostness. Even people, as we'll see next week in the church, can be lost. We must start coming to church on Sabbath filled with our need. Our minds not filled up with our posture, our positions, our long years in the church. That means nobody's going to be saved in the kingdom because of position, long years in the church, or influence. No, we're going to be saved because we have confessed to Christ our crookedness. We open our hearts every Sabbath to receive him and we are so conscious of our own lostness that we have no time to talk about others. And then Jesus does not have to say, it's, it, it, it's pathetic, Anwar, that at the end of the parable, Jesus must say to the sheep, rejoice with me. How come Christ has to ask the church to rejoice over lost sheep. He should have not had to say that at all. As soon as they saw him coming over the hill, the lost sheep, the fold, when they saw the lost sheep, they should have been singing that song, Marvelous Grace of our loving Lord. Come on, y'all. Grace that exceeds our sin and our guilt. As soon as they saw that lost sheep, they should have been rejoicing. Christ should not have had to say one word.
Come on, Anwar. Sing a few words of that song. Marvelous grace oh, yes. of our loving Lord. I love this hymn. Grace that exceeds uh -huh. our sin and our guilt. Wander on Calvary's mount outpoured. There where the blood of the Lamb You know it? Sing the chorus with it. Grace, grace. Come on, saints, I need to hear you. God's grace, yes, yes, grace that will pardon and cleanse within. I need to hear you now. This is beautiful. Grace, grace, my God's grace, grace that is greater than all our sin. Next verse. 